good morning welcome back to moth gaming so i had to change the name from the last video for my youtube channel originally it was vanguard gaming but there was actually quite a few channels called that so i actually changed it to moth gaming today uh yesterday i was a little sick so but uh right now we are well i was talking about the ak-47 yesterday and i didn't really get into it too much but the idea behind this, and this will piss a lot of people off, is actually this gas system was inspired heavily by the M1 Garand in World War II by Mikhail Kalashnikov. So, it's a 760 by 39 It was developed in the Soviet Union's. Uh, so, the officially known as, and now I don't speak Russian as well, I had studied it for a bit, did some work around them, but that was about it. So I think it's Automat Kalashnikova, also known as Kalashnikov's Automatic Rifle, or a Kalashnikov, or just a K. So it's been around for about seven decades, and it originally started, uh, what's it called? Uh, it was originally started being designed in 1941. So what it was is during World War II, the Sturmgewehr 44 rifle used by German forces made a deep impression on their Soviet uh, military. The select fire was chambered in a few intermediate cartridges. For example, the uh, Sturmgewehr was 7.92 7 by 33 Kurs, which was the firepower of like a submachine gun, but it had a more of a range and accuracy of a rifle. So, oh, where was I going here? So the concept of it began in 1941 when Mikhail Kalashnikov was recruiting, recuperating from a shoulder wound. Now, he received this during the Battle of Bryansk, and Kalashnikov himself said, I was in the hospital, and a soldier in the bedside of me asked, why do our soldiers only have one rifle for two or three of our men when Germans have automatics? So I designed one. I was a soldier, and I created a machine gun for a soldier. It was called a Automat Kalashnikova, the automatic weapon of the Kalashnikov AK, and it was carried this year for its first manufacture in 1947. In 1941, he was starting to design. He was actually a uh, tank driver for the T-34, I want to say. Now, going forward, in 1941, he designed it. 1943, it entered testing. 1947, it was widely adopted, hence the name AK-47 of the year. Now, yesterday, I did something, and I, <laughs> I was called out on it. Don't worry. But if we go to the quote-unquote compensator this is actually not a compensator can I spin this okay so as you see uh, actually can I see better from the back side okay so what this does is it's not a true compensator it's actually just a flash hider which seems like it'd be kind of weird with that uh well it feels like it'd give a bigger uh muzzle br uh muzzle flash because it is a cone basically but this actually disassembles so there's some chambers in there to help hang on to that expanding gas so it's still loud but it does reduce the flash it's actually not a compensator so yesterday when you saw that fire shooting out the side it wouldn't actually do that uh espressor this is actually accurate ak-47 espressors look pretty interesting and this one says reduces the sound of gunfire at the cost of stopping power realistically what this does is it also increases the velocity because it actually traps more gas in the barrel as it's firing so that round actually typically starts coming out faster which would increase the distance of it and theoretically the damage small object moving faster and then compensator this this is a flash hider would it work as a compensator probably because it has ports in 360 degrees the idea of this is just to keep it like a little ball of fire instead of a massive one so we're going to stick with the good old cone i don't remember what it's called love it though i want it uh, what else do we got here? So, there, I've rectified my issue. Happy? All right, so yesterday we talked about the AK-47, basically, and we started doing some of the missions. We knocked out the first one. So today we are going to try the this one. This one can be kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, I, I did... <laughs> I actually played for a bit yesterday, but I forgot to put on my mic. So it was just like... I don't know, 20 minutes of me just being quiet because like Div wasn't recording the voice. Dig in. The cartel's gonna hit this place hard so. once that transmission starts. 
All right. So that being said, we got back, guys. Oh, the Mark Forty, uh, the Mark Forty Seven, the Mark Seventeen or the Scar Seventeen in this game is chambered in three way, but it doesn't hit like a three way. It hits more like a I don't know nine millimeter. Like it takes several rounds. So I'm gonna start here, and we're gonna get into positions. Put my guys. I'll just put them over here. So. It just needs them in this area. Oh, wait, we got guys coming up behind us, huh? I'm shooting. Take cover. All right, we got another one coming down the road. Oh, I got one. Oh, shit. All right, well, let's see if our guys can get to us. All right, they got one. I guess they're not worried about the other one. All right. Oh, fucking civilian in the way. Sniper's got us targeted. Sniper. Shit balls. Man down, man down. All right. Frag out. Oh, fuck you. So this is what I meant about the uh, AI team teammates not being very useful. Typically, this game's a lot easier with it, but to progress the story, we actually have to run this. You don't actually have to do this, these, all these side things. They do let you do, like, uh, it's called rebel spotting, rebel distraction, drop mortars, but honestly, it's not that useful. I think of all of them, we only use the rebel spotting the most. So, yeah. Okay, this time we're going to switch over to full auto here. Because I'm using a quote-unquote compensator. That is not a compensator. But, yeah. Oh, I just hit my mic. You know, actually, let's... Honestly, I feel like the AK is not the way to go for this particular one. Let's go with... Oh, what do we got? We got a slot. We got Mark 249. Uh, do you want that or do you want the... You know, yeah, we'll use the 249. This is a 249. It's chambered in 5.56. Same basically M4. Let's see if they actually have the... Sh see if you can see it. Yep, so... Uh, wait. I might be wrong. I can't see it. But typically, you can... Act actually, this is... I don't believe... No, this is not a 249, actually. This is a automatic upper on an M4 lower, I just realized. Oh, okay. So this isn't that. It'll probably work, though. Actually, let's uh, go Mark 48 Super Saw. Yes. Yes, good. All right. So we can put on here uh scope and let's put a exp magazine 200 under barrel so another thing they didn't put in there i feel like a bipod would have been a lot useful for this all right let's see what we got for handling here uh, we'll go with this one gives me best handling rail uh you know what we'll go for this one just because it's better accuracy barrel long barrel but all the velocity. And we're going to get a compensator. All right. I think the uh, reload time... Oh, that is loud and beefy. What's the rate of fire like? That's not bad. All right. All right, let's... So, 
mostly gonna be coming from here. Let's put our guys like right. Here. Let's put them over here. Hopefully they'll kind of figure it out. Roger. All right, stress again. Hostiles in the area. Stay fast. Ready? Open fire. Roger. They infect our children with evil. They steal our land. They enslave us. They make... Yep, this is going to be a lot more effective. Oh, 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 shit. All right, I guess they're just bawling down the stairs now. All right, where can I fucking get into some cover? Oh, shit. All right, looks like I'm moving back to the fucking tires here. They're going to destroy the goddamn emitter. Enemy down. Keep the first fire on. All right, I gotta reload and pray this is faster. Come on, reload. I'm gonna move inside this building here. Come on. Okay, message sent. That ought to inspire the rebels. Well done, compadres. My speech was heard all over Bolivia. It is only a matter of time before the people rise up and join our cause. Viva la revolución! Glad we could help. Now what have you got on Yuri and Polito? Nothing yet, amigo. Those two, they cover their tracks well. But my people are working on it. We will know something soon. In the meantime, my revolutionary brothers in Itaqua stand ready to help if you need them. Just call, and they will come. I'll keep that in mind. Alright, finally got that done. Okay. I may have someone who can give you information on Yuri and Polito. I'm listening. One of my lieutenants managed to escape from them. He fled to a village called Kulta. Rather than give my man up to the cartel, the villagers hit him. Goddamn bravery right there. In response, Santa Blanca raised every home and executed all the villagers. Fuck. My lieutenant is still being kept alive. Probably so he can be killed in an even more painful way. Understood. We're heading to Kulta now. Alright. Looks like we are doing a rescue mission or an extraction. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we got an intel guy down here, actually. We got company. Stay sharp. Jackass. That was indeed a civilian. We're clear on this side. All right. Let's uh, switch back here. This one, there's some. Oh, it's inside. Not necessary, but satisfying. We'll leave a marker so the rebels can All right. supplies later. So last time we used the AK-47 for the entire video. Let's switch this up if I can find that ammo. All right. First pick up ammo. All right, let's switch this out. Uh, useful, definitely. All right, so... Used the AK-47. We established the AK-12 and not AK-12. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, not feeling British. Mm. Oh, Mark 18. Yes, we are running the Mark 18. Love this gun. Want this gun. Can't afford this gun. This gun goes for about 2000 plus. But, oh, it's so nice. So on it. Let's see, stock bus stock. Yeah. That's the Daniel Defense bus stock. Love it. Actually, that's my preferred bus stock. Let's see. Magazines. Is it a 30? No, it's a 20. God, son of a bitch. Let's see. Rail cover. What we could put on here? Let's put an AFG. Do a... Let's do a peck. So typically you see the pack not sitting on the side. You typically see that particular thing sitting on the top just because it weights it down evenly. Oh, um, I don't, yeah, say so it comes with one barrel. That barrel is, so typically you find most AR-15 uppers, like the, sh like the short ones around 10 inches, are 10.5. What makes this one special is 10.3. It is the shortest they could go and still put a suppressor on it. So you're going to see here that... Uh, you know, this gun's actually meant for a suppressor. It looks good with a suppressor. Let's put a suppressor on this thing. So as you can see, that's about as short as you can go with a barrel and that uh, suppressor still lock up. All right, let's put parts back. All right, let's go pick a upper... Uh, you know, let's do Comp M4. Yes, that is a sexy beast right there. Uh, no woman has ever said that to me, just for the record. Like, ever. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that particular Mark 18 Riz rail right there. It's called a Riz. It's a rail interface system. You see those three screws right there on the side? What those are designed for is instead of attaching it to the hand, to the barrel for a grenade launcher like they used to, what it does is it interfaces with the hand guard so you don't have to change your zero or anything when you mount a... When you mount a Alright, let's it over. So you see those three little uh, screws on the side there? So what those are designed to do is you take those out and the bottom part of that handguard comes off. The reason they did that is that way they can mount a grenade launcher to the handguard and not the barrel so they wouldn't have to change the zero. That way you can that way you can throw on a grenade launcher and it would keep the zero on your optic. Alright. Now that I've got that out, alright, let's take a run with this. Oh, I love it. All right. What's this? Uh, Itakwa uh, Kulta's prisoner. So I thought there was one. The commander. Ah, there we go. We've Let's do the uh, sports car. Lito's personal car. Steal it, so our techs can analyze the car's GPS for intel. All right. And weirdly enough, there are venues in this area that look like this, too. Like, they make it look so cool with, those, with the uh, dirt bikes. Like, yeah, cool, get on the dirt bike, go rushing down this hill. As you saw earlier, it's... What it does is the camera doesn't catch up with the motorcycle. Like, it doesn't lock into a certain angle right away. Oh, it looks so good. All right. Uh, let's turn this night, actually. Oh, wrong button. Let's try this again. All right, let's come in at three, not eleven. Go ahead and eleven. So the Mark 18 is actually made by a company called Daniel Defense. A uh, guy actually started out just making like some accessories for the just AR-15 platform in general. And then he, uh, you know, it. He, got that contract and this brand just kind of exploded mark 18s are very expensive but they're very good same with the rest of their uh rifles all right let's see all right actually the uh official name for it cqbr i think it is close quarter upper no cq upper hold up here yeah, CQBR is what it is. 
Originally, what they did for this, they actually kind of experimented with this back in Vietnam. They took an M16 and they shortened the barrel, making it a dissipator, making it a little more useful. Problem with that is, after like the front side post of an M16, the rest of that barrel, you have a thing that's called dwell time. Dwell time is the amount of gas that is going into your upper receiver, basically, to cause it to recoil and chamber a new round. So the thing about that so the thing about that is if you shorten your barrel but you don't move the gas block back they ended up with like i don't know half an inch of dwell time and it would sometimes cause the rifle to not cycle properly so actually that's where the idea for a mid-length rifle came from uh, originally we went to a okay so for the carbine, the M4 or the XM4. Hold up. We got hostiles in the area. I got a narco over here. There, next to the turret. All right, turret. that's kind of cool. It's down here. So the XM14 was a carbine. Well, the carbine's very useful because it has, uh, I believe, the gas, the A2 front sight is at the seven-inch mark, which leaves almost ten inches of dwell time. So it has an incredibly fast cycle, where so that so the faster the gun cycles, faster it can fire. The problem with that is since it has so much gas going back into it, it does wear out it faster, but faster means like thousands of rounds. This is the garage. Sound off if you spot Polito's car. Roger that. Guy in there. Got another tango. So I get the drop on this guy. I do believe my gun is on full auto. It, it very much is. Alright. There's one. Uh, I should probably take out these lights here. Let's drop the street lights, actually. Yeah, but uh, faster it cycles, the more recoil you have. Don't get me wrong, the recoil, it, it's it's a basically a 223. It's a 22 that's been beefed up to shoot a rifle, basically. It's a 22 that's been beefed up. So it, it fires, it has a very high velocity, so, which is what causes that damage, because it causes a, causes a temporary wound cavity. Basically, it, it goes into the target, be it a deer or gelatin, and like what it does is it causes this gap to just rip through the body. So if you ever watch Ballistic Gel, what you see is it just expands it. So what it's causing is all that internal damage on the deer. Uh, it's starting to rip muscle, cause internal bleeding. So we found out that a small round moving very fast works very well. It was very handy. Russians saw that in, you know, saw that in World War II, saw that in Vietnam era and is Delta 545 by 39 which is their take on the 556 five, it's a good round it had a name developed the name called the poison poison round where what happened is it has a tendency to tumble basically instead of like flying like a spiral it tumbles like a football being thrown like a knife so it just tumbles end over end which is not indicative to going straight through something uh, they have had improvements, I believe. So. I got one narco over by the crate of comm gear. Right. How dark is that? Oh, where is that other light? There it is. Nope, that did not affect that at all. Is it this? Hang back, that tango might spot you. We got civilians dangerously close. Check your targets Watch before you shoot. We don't want to kill somebody by mistake. Ah. 
Ah, there they are. Okay, someone's on the wall. Go ahead and shitter for a second. Oh god, it's an actual shitter. This is over by that stack of dirty. Alright, let's see if we can't. Dark is that alright, so this is adequately dark. Alright, let's hurry up here. This gives the twenty of a Santa Blanca medal they're awarding to some ass kisser. There it is. Eyes on Polito's car. Oh shit, reload. Reload. Alright, fuck it, we're getting in this room, we're just Taking leaving. Whoo! Bloody condom in the glove box. Make that two bloody condoms. I guess that confirms it's Yuri and Polito's ride. Even if the condoms come standard, it's a sweet fucking car. I never could understand an arco thing. You get an expensive whip, put chrome rims on it, then you just drive it around the same dusty times you were driving around before. You totally want one of these cars, don't you? Fancy car, fancy suit, still the same street, so what's the point? Air conditioning. So, <laughs> I uh, ran out of rounds right there. Uh, that's actually the reason a lot of mags have a window on the side. I wasn't paying attention. So, that could have gone bad. Probably looking back, kind of panicked. Should have switched to the pistol. So, Alright, let's kind of speed this up here. Excuse me. Hmm. Check out that flare here in a second. Typically those flares are either actual need of help or they're kind of like trying to lure you in. All right, now it's up to Bowman and the activity. They'll check the car's GPS for locations where Yuri and Polito may be hiding out. Make some ammo. All right, I said we'd check it out. How dark is it? Oh, it's dark. Uh, so pretty. God, I wish I could get rid of that second rifle in my bag. I Need mean, something that was useful though. If the small shotgun was more useful, I'd be all over it. What's the despawn? No flares. So, uh, most people believe that. So. What happens with a shorter barrel is you start losing the velocity, makes the round less likely to cause damage. What you want it to do is you want it to tumble when it hits something, or it hits a uh, fleshy object. And the shorter the barrel, less stabilized, the, the less time it is stabilized. So typically you see a lot of people, like, when they wear, get, like, a short barrel, they get upset that they're not getting, like, you know, point MOA whatever MOA uh, distance, it's because you're starting to lose your, uh, your not your zero, your uh, stability in that round faster. Think about a short barrel, though. It's not designed for long-distance engagement. You can still hit a target out to, like, 400 relatively easy. But in reality, it's really more for, like, 300 and in, which is the max effective range of 5.56. So... Then you got rifles that are like the Mark 12, which can easily go out to 800. Fucking llamas, man. Or alpacas, whatever. Oh, come on. So, now we got that going. Another thing, too. Why can't I shut off the laser? Oh, okay. That's actually a good point. So, you see how the laser is mounted on the side. 
so the reason they typically don't mount them on the side is because it makes your gun kind of want to roll just when you're holding it. They mark it on the, they write it on the top, but you'll see a lot of uh, professional soldiers tilt their guns sideways. So the reason is, out at distance, that's where the laser and your barrel meet. Well, the thing about this is, if you have a laser or a Pac-15 like you have here, it is mounted off to the side. Up close, your laser is actually off to the side as opposed to where your barrel is. So what you'll see is a lot of professional soldiers when they're shooting night operations or practicing, training, whatever. They tilt their gun about 45 degrees because that, uh, that laser will rotate. The barrel will stay, but the barrel, the, uh, the laser and the barrel will be uh, on top of one another. Basically, instead of like having to remember, like, my laser's off to the left, even though it's on my right side for some reason. Uh, I have to remember for my barrel, I have to aim like two inches to the left to make sure that I'm hitting center mass with that. So what they do is they typically, they take the rifle, tilt at 45 degrees so the laser's on top of the barrel. That way they have to remember I have to aim X amount high to hit the target. So. I think it's a friendly. <laughs> All right. Not pretty. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna turn my shot back on. Alright. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, shit. We completely entered a different area. <laughs> Alright. Uh, what's this? Uh, commander, unit ad commander of Fob Armadillo, frankly sent presidential to Leo La Yuri in El Polito for interrogation. Get to the Fob Armadillo, track down the base commander, and find out what he knows. Alright, well, we got anything closer? We do. So I move out this way. So we were talking about the uh, Mark 18 earlier. So it's called the CQBR, it has a 10.3 inch barrel, 10.3. As you are, for those who don't speak on the moon, 262 millimeter. Uh, it's similar to the Colt Commando. It was a short barreled M16 basically in Vietnam. Uh, so it's more compact, making it easier to use in and around vehicles in tight, confined spaces. Uh, overall length is about 20 inches. Uh, with the stock retracted, the overall length of the weapon. Oh, actually, let me phrase that. So the overall. So, okay, so the upper is 20 inches entirely. The lower and the upper combined are 26 inches, so under 30 inches. Uh, typically, you see it a lot with special forces. The Ranger Battalions use them also. They're special operations. Very popular for, like, VIP protection, urban warfare, and close quarters battle, or CQP, CQB. Uh, let's see. What can I think of? Uh, so reason that they went for that going back to the whole uh what's called length of the gun so the m16 and m14 are not ideally suited they can be used but they have relatively long barrels but the modularity of those rifles allows the operator to easily replace the upper receiver one of two proposed special mission receivers that were planned for the inclusion into the sobmad block 2 kit which the Block 2 rifle, I really like. That's my favorite M4 out there. But uh, the Block 2 kit, the CQBR, has taken off on its own. So like the proposed special purpose rifle, or SPR, special purpose receiver, the CQBR, close quarter battle rifle, or receiver, was uh, more or less taken on by the Naval Special Warfare Center Crane Division, or NS or NSWC Crane, or just Crane. Typically here people refer to just Crane. Uh, it has its own project with following the CQBR's removal from the SOP mod program. Special Operations Modularity Program, I believe. But, uh, so... Let's see what, uh, da -da, what else is there? Uh, so it has two, actually, two classifications. So the one that you have right here is the mod two i want to say no mod one so the mod o is the basically it's an m4 with this length barrel in that front side post 
It's really it. Uh, Submachine gun size, immediate cartridge, yeah, so. Very useful, very powerful, very useful. Uh, not ideal for, like, you know, out there at distance. Oh, and the gas block, the gas block on there, I don't know if you can see it in there. But the gas block on that thing. Oh, wait, hold up, I can take this gun apart, huh? Hadoi. Let's see, the barrel. So you see that gas block on there, it's that little thing with the rod coming out of it. It actually has a tube, but that has a hole in it that's bigger than standard. So what it does is that it, it's designed to fire more reliably. So they increase the gas tube because you can see, uh, not the gas tube, they increase the gas pore size, which is the hole on top of the barrel. And as you can see, this one has a very short barrel coming to that and where the gas block is. So they did that so it had a chance to run better. Well, if you run a suppressor on it, it really works well in it, but it really kicks a lot of gas towards the shooter, back through the receiver and stuff. So you'll see a lot of people get gassed out while they shoot this. So that was that. Let's uh, see what we got for a little more oomph here. Let's see. Oh, too far. Let's see. So we got the Mark 18. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, let's do the Mark 16. Or not Mark 16, the M16. I like the M16. The M16 makes me a happy camper. This one comes with a M203, I want to say. So, uh, this isn't an M16. This is actually an M16A2, I want to say. You can tell because the handle detaches. Or is it an A4? I don't remember. I can't tell. I don't remember. Don't judge me. Stop it. So... Uh, as you can see, you have your stock carrying handle. So the problem was, so after they went away from the carrying handle and into, like, the ACOG and stuff like that, they made their soldiers hang on to this and, like, put it in their bag. Which is just, like, more stuff for people to carry because they just figured that Marines or whoever are just going to lose their stuff. So eventually they did go with a smaller folding down backup site, which makes a lot more sense. Like, let's see what we got here. You know, I'll run this like an actual M16 here. Uh, handguard, this is a little uncommon to see nowadays. Typically, you see them the M5 Raz, I think it is. Barely, yeah, I can't see it. Yeah, but see, this one, what they did is, this one has a large, large dwell time. The, M, the M4s is even bigger, too, because they have like a 10-inch barrel of dwell time. What they did with this one is they cut that barrel very short... But they didn't take into concept uh, or take into the thought that, that is would cause problems. But since this is a gas uh, rifle length gas tube or gas system, it has very little recoil. Like it has almost none, and it's very pleasurable to shoot. I just realized something. That buffer tube is not the right buffer tube game. That is not right. Get that M4 carbine out of my fucking A2. That is blasphemous. I don't know why that bothered me too much. Let's see. That would make sense. Uh, M203, M203, I think it said? Oh, it just comes standard. I don't even have it unlocked yet. It just sits there. So, yeah, see, this one comes with the standard 30. The original in Vietnam had the 20. That could be an ass hand where the sure feed. This has mixed reviews in real life. Uh, let's... Now let's do a semi-auto and full auto. Let's make it a E4, I want to say. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm probably wrong. Oh, it's so sexy. So heavy, though, with all that shit on there. See, this also, that, that grip is another thing that's wrong, too. That's an original A1. This isn't an A1, so we've noticed that it has the wrong grip. So it has the wrong grip, wrong buffer tube. What the shit? Unless this is maybe like an A1 stock? Well, let's find out. That, you know, I can't tell if that's an A1 stock or not. It kind of looks like an A1 stock. It might be an A1 stock. So this is a mishmash of like different ones here. All right. Oh, that looks good. Let's, uh, yeah. This is my favorite rifle in this entire game. You know, I'm going to shoot burst anyways. I guess now nah, I want to switch. Oh, yeah. Does it still work? 
It does. Let's go. All right, one of you fuckers, get on. Go ahead, I'll meet you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, let's let's figure out where we're going here. I've learned that an Unidad captain named Fuentes has been working with Yuri and Polito. Interrogate Fuentes and see what intel he can give us. <laughs> that is just good looking right there. There's the thumbnail. Alright. Uh, we'll get closer to our destination. We'll probably call it quits. Wee. Oh, I can turn off the radio. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted either. Fire, fire, no, fire. that's not it either. I don't remember. And again, I also don't remember how to get there. You know, we'll call it quits. Because I feel like this is a very, very classy way to end this. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you for joining. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.